Hello everyone, welcome to Low Back Pain, presented by Lamp Acuvalis Foundation, Inc. Our topics today are acupuncture treatment, prognosis and prevention, Western differentiation. From the acupuncture perspective, the most important aspects for a successful treatment are not so much a differentiation of patterns, but a proper selection of distal and local points with the appropriate manipulation and radiation of the needling sensation. The choice of points is guided not so much by an identification of patterns as by the location and nature of the pain. Acute conditions are due either to cold dampness or to stagnation of chi and blood in the area. In acute cases, distal points are particularly important. They are inserted first and manipulated for some time before inserting the local points. The choice of distal points depends on the location of the pain. The main ones are as follows. Bladder 40, if the pain is in the lower part of the back, just above the buttock, whether unilateral or bilateral. Do 26, if the pain is on the midline or starting from the midline and spreading out. Bladder 10, also if the pain is on the midline or starting from the midline and spreading out. The needling sensation should preferably radiate downwards along the bladder channel. SI3, if the pain is unilateral and slightly higher, roughly level with the umbilicus. The extra point, Yao Tong Shui, if the pain is unilateral and in the middle part of the back, higher than the level of the umbilicus. Bladder 58, if there is a pain in the leg between the bladder and gallbladder channel, that is, not clearly in one channel or the other. Bladder 62, if the pain is unilateral and radiates down to one leg, it is selected also when the pain radiation down the leg affects more than one channel. Bladder 59, if walking is difficult, from this point, one should obtain a needling sensation that radiates upwards along the bladder channel. Here we see the connection between distal points and area affected by them. Now let's familiarize ourselves with the uh, distal points. Bladder 40, if the pain is in the lower part of the back, just above the buttocks, unilateral or bilateral. This is called the supporting middle, located at the midpoint of the transverse crease of the popliteal fossa between the tendons of biceps femoris and semitendinosus. Bladder 40 is the HC point of the urinary bladder and the command point of the low back. Clear seat, resolves dampness, benefits the lumbar area and knees, cools the blood, clears summer heat, activates the meridian, relieves pain. Bladder 40 is an excellent point for any low back condition, acute or chronic. It is also known to help skin conditions. HC points are where the chi of the meridian collects and goes deep into the body. HC points are known to treat rebellious chi and diarrhea. Needling, perpendicular insertion, 1 to 1.5 soon, or prick the popliteal vein with a three-edged needle to cause bleeding. Do 26, or governing vessel 26, for pain on the midline or starting from midline and spreading out. Location, on the face, at the junction of the superior third and middle third of the philtrum. Do 26 is crossing point on the do vessel with the large intestine and stomach meridians. DO26 resuscitates, treats acute lumbar sprain, and benefits the nose. DO26 is used for emergency treatment, needling, oblique insertion upwards, 0.3 to 0.5 soon. Bladder 10, if the pain is on the midline or starting from the midline and spreading out. Location on the nape in the depression on the lateral border of the trapezius muscle within the posterior hairline, 1.3 tune lateral to the midline. Bladder 10 is a sea of chi point, window of the sky point. Functions, expels wind, activates the meridian, soothes the sinews, benefits the head, 
alleviates pain, opens the sense orifices. Needling, perpendicular or oblique insertion, 0.5 to 0.8 soon. Do not insert the needle deeply medially upwards to avoid injuring the medulla oblongata. SI3, if the pain is unilateral and slightly higher, level with the umbilicus. Location, when a loose fist is made, the point is on the ulnar aspect of the hand, proximal to the fifth metacarpophalangeal joint at the end of the transverse crease of the metacarpophalangeal joint at the junction of the red and white skin. SI3 is shoestring point of the small intestine meridian and master point of the do meridian coupled with bladder 62. Benefits the neck and back, activates the meridian, expels exterior wind, regulates the do meridian, calms the shen, treats malaria. SA3 is an excellent point for neck and back issues when coupled with bladder 62. Shoestring points are where the chi starts to pour down the meridian. They are known to alleviate heaviness and pain in the joints. On yin meridian, shoestring points are identical to the actions of yuan source points. Needling, perpendicular insertion, 0.5 to 1 soon. The extra point, Yao Tong Shui. For pain, unilateral and in the middle part of the back, higher than the level of the umbilicus. This extra point is located on the dorsum of the hand, midway between the transverse wrist crease and metacarpophalangeal joint, between the second and third metacarpal bones, and between the fourth and fifth metacarpal bones, four points in all on both hands. This is a very good point for acute lumbar sprain and low back pain. Bladder 58. If the pain is in the leg between the bladder and gallbladder channel, not clearly in one channel or the other. Location on the posterior aspect of the lower leg behind the external malleolus, 7 soon directly above bladder 60, 1 soon inferior and lateral to bladder 57. This point is classified as a loo connecting point of the urinary bladder meridian expels wind damp, harmonizes excess above and deficiency below, activates the meridian, alleviates pain. Loo connecting points of one meridian can communicate with two meridians. They treat diseases of the collaterals and can be used to treat chronic diseases, especially chronic diseases of the Zanfu organs. Clinically, loo connecting points are often combined with yuan source points in the treatment of diseases. Needling perpendicular insertion 0.7 to 1 soon. Bladder 62. If the pain is unilateral and radiates down to one leg. Selected also when the pain radiation down the leg affects more than one channel. Location in the depression directly below the external malleolus. Classification of bladder 62, master point of the Yang Chao vessel coupled with SI3. Dispels interior wind, benefits the eyes and head, relaxes the sinews, treats epilepsy, calms the shen. Bladder 62 is an excellent point for neck and back issues when coupled with SI3. Needling perpendicular insertion 0.3 to 0.5 soon. Bladder 59, if the walking is difficult. From this point, one should obtain a needling sensation that radiates upwards along the bladder channel. Location, on the posterior aspect of the lower leg, behind the external malleolus, 3 tsun directly above bladder 60. Bladder 59 is C cleft point of the Yang Chao vessel. Activates the meridian, Benefits the low back and legs, alleviates pain. A C-cleft point is the site where the chi of the meridian is deeply converged. Chi and blood are stored deeply at this particular point. If there appear abnormal reactions at C-cleft points, it shows that the pathogens have entered the deeper parts of Zangfu organs. Thus, they are used for acute painful symptoms, inflammation, protracted diseases, 
of its pertaining meridian and Zhangfu organ. Also, Ziklev points of the Yun meridians have hemostatic functions, needling perpendicular insertion 0.8 to 1.2 tsun. The technique used is to insert the distal point or points first, obtain the needling sensation, and then manipulate the needle quite vigorously with reducing method, while the patient gently flexes and turns the waist. If a third person is available, he could help the patient to effect these movements. In most cases, this procedure is best carried out while the patient is standing. This is the only example of treatment given while the patient stands. The distal needle or needles are retained for about 15 minutes, during which time they can be manipulated at intervals. After this, the distal needles are removed and the patient lies down for the local points to be needled. Local points. These are selected according to tenderness on pressure. It is therefore very important to press and try various points systematically. The local points are needled with reducing method and the needles are then left in place for about 20 minutes during which time they can be manipulated at intervals. An effective way of reducing the points is to adopt the clock technique, that is, lifting and thrusting the needle with a circular movement, like the hour hand round the face of a clock. The local points that are most likely to be tender have been mentioned. The main local points for lower back pain are as follows. These are the most common tender points in the back. Bladder 26, this is the most important local point and one that is nearly always the most painful. Bladder 25, if the pain is higher than the sacroiliac area. Bladder 54, if the pain is in the buttocks. Tunjung extra point lateral to bladder 54 if the pain is in the buttocks, and bladder 36 if the pain radiates down the back of the thigh. Bladder 37 if the pain radiates down the back of the thigh. Do 3 or governing vessel 3 strengthens the back and legs. It is especially used if the pain radiates to the leg. To make the needling sensation radiate downwards is difficult, but if it radiates outwards from the point, that should be sufficient. Do 4, or governing vessel 4, tonifies kidney yang and strengthens the back. Do 8, relaxes the sinews and relieves stiffness and contraction of the spine. Shisha Wisha, on the governing vessel below the tip of L5, an extremely effective extra point for back pain in the center of the lower part of the back. Bladder 32, used if the pain is over the sacrum. The needling sensation should radiate outwards. Bladder 23, this is always used in chronic backache occurring against a background of kidney deficiency. Other points on the governing vessel may be chosen according to deviation and rotation of vertebrae. The points on the governing vessel may be combined with the corresponding Watojaji points. If a vertebra is rotated, it is best to use the governing vessel point below it, as well as three pairs of Watojaji points at its level and immediately below and above it. Bladder 26 is the most important local point, nearly always the most painful. Location on the back 1.5 tsun, lateral to the lower border of the spinous process of the fifth lumbar vertebra. Strengthens the low back, removes obstructions from the meridian. Needling perpendicular insertion 0.8 to 1.2 tsun. Bladder 25, if the pain is higher than the sacroiliac area, Location on the back 1.5 soon lateral to the lower border of the spinous process of the fourth lumbar vertebra. This is the back shoe point of the large intestine. Bladder 25 
regulates the large intestine, strengthens the low back, removes obstructions from the meridian. Bladder 25 is very good for either diarrhea or constipation. It is also a very effective local point for low back pain. Bakshu points are corresponding points on the back where the chi of the respective Zangfu organ is infused. If the five Zang organs are deceased, abnormal reactions appear on the Bakshu points. Bakshu points have a direct therapeutic effect on the diseases of the five Zang organs. Needling perpendicular insertion 0.5 to 1 soon. Bladder 54 if the pain is in the buttocks. Location in the region of the sacrum, three tsun lateral to the middle sacral crest at the level of the fourth posterior sacral foramen. Benefits urination, activates the meridian, strengthens the low back, alleviates pain. Needling perpendicular insertion, one to two tsun. Tunchum extra point, lateral to bladder 54, pain in the buttocks. This is translated as middle of the buttock, at the apex of an imaginary equilateral triangle whose base is a line drawn between the superior posterior side of the greater trochanter of the femur to the ischial tuberosity. Needling straight insertion 2 to 3 tsun. Bladder 36 if the pain radiates down the back of the thigh. Location on the posterior aspect of the thigh in the middle of the transverse gluteal fold. Activates the meridian, relieves pain, treats hemorrhoids. Needling perpendicular insertion 1 to 2 tsun. Bladder 37 if the pain radiates down the back of the thigh. Location on the posterior aspect of the thigh, 6 tsun below bladder 36 on the line connecting bladder 36 and bladder 40. Activates the meridian, benefits the lumbar area, relieves pain. Needling perpendicular insertion, 1 to 2 tsun. 2, 3 or governing vessel 3, strengthens the back and legs. Used if pain radiates to the leg. To make needling sensation radiate downwards is difficult, but if it radiates outwards from the point, that should be sufficient. Location on the lumbar region on the posterior median line in the depression below the spinous process of the fourth lumbar vertebra. Do 3 strengthens the lumbar region, dispels wind dampness, tonifies yang. Needling oblique insertion upward, 0.5 to 1 soon. Do 4 or governing vessel 4 tonifies kidney yang and strengthens the back. Location on the lumbar region on the posterior median line in the depression below the spinous process of the second lumbar vertebra. Tonifies kidney chi and yang, tonifies original chi, nourishes essence, clears heat, strengthens the lumbar region and knees. Do 4 is one of the most effective points to tonify yang and strengthen the constitution. It is especially efficacious if moxa is also used on the point. Needling oblique insertion upward 0.5 to 1 soon. Do 8 relaxes the sinews and relieves stiffness and contraction of the spine. Location on the back on the posterior median line in the depression below the spinous process of the ninth thoracic vertebra. Benefits the sinews, relieves possums, dispels interior wind, calms the liver. Needling, oblique insertion upward, 0.5 to 1 soon. Sisha Huisha is translated as below the 17th vertebra. On the midline of the lower back, in the depression below the spinous process of the 5th lumbar vertebra. Perpendicular insertion, 0.5 to 1 soon. Caution. The spinal canal lies between 1.25 and 1.75 soon deep to the skin surface, varying according to body build. This extra point tonifies the kidneys, promotes urination, activates the channel, alleviates pain, benefits the back. 
This is one of the most commonly used points for chronic back pain. It can be used for both deficiency and excess conditions. Bladder 32 if the pain is over the sacrum. Needling sensation should radiate outwards. Location in the region of the sacrum, medial and inferior to the posterior superior iliac spine in the second sacral foramen. Regulates the lower jaw, regulates menstruation, benefits urination, benefits the lumbar area and legs. Needling perpendicular insertion 1 to 1.5 soon. Bladder 23 for chronic backache occurring against the background of kidney deficiency. Location on the back 1.5 soon lateral to the lower border of the spinous process of the second lumbar vertebra. This is the back shoe point of the kidney. Strengthens the kidneys, tonifies kidney yang, nourishes kidney yin and essence, strengthens kidney's ability to grasp chi, benefits the ears and bones, strengthens the low back, resolves dampness. Bladder 23 is one of the most effective points to tonify the kidneys. Needling perpendicular insertion 0.5 to 1 soon. Case history. A 44-year-old woman complained of an acute backache that had started after working in the garden. The pain was intense and was centered around the left sacroiliac area. It radiated downwards to the left buttock and the back of the leg. She had not suffered from any backache before. On examination, the muscles on the left side of her back were in spasm and the whole area felt very stiff. The most tender point was bladder 26. She was quite a tense person and her pulse was slightly rapid and wiry. Diagnosis. This is a case of acute back pain from sprain. She was treated only with acupuncture. The distal points used were bladder 62 on the left, pericardium 7 on the right, and liver 3 bilaterally. Bladder 62 was used to remove obstructions from the bladder channel on the left side. Pericardium 7 was selected to calm the mind and relax the muscles. Liver 3 was chosen to relax the muscles and sinews. These points were reduced and then left in place for 45 minutes, being manipulated again a few times during this period. The local points inserted after withdrawing the distal ones were bladder 26 on the left with needle reducing method and cocking. The needle was manipulated vigorously applying a lift thrust reducing technique. It was left in place about 10 minutes, then withdrawn and cupping was applied to the point for another 10 minutes. Tunjum, the extra point lateral to bladder 54, was selected as it was tender on pressure. This was needled at a depth of 2.5 inches and a good needling sensation was obtained, radiating down the back of the leg as far as the knee. As a good needling sensation was obtained, no other points were necessary. This treatment was repeated once more the next day, and two sessions were enough to clear up the problem completely. However, as on further analysis, it became evident that she had an underlying kidney yin deficiency. There has not been any recurrence since then. PC7 calms the mind and relaxes the muscles. Location in the middle of the transverse crease of the wrist between the tendons of palmaris longus and flexor carpi radialis. Yuan source point of the pericardium meridian and shoestring point of the pericardium meridian. Calms the shen, clears heat in the heart, opens the chest, regulates heart chi, harmonizes the stomach. Clinically, Yuan source points are of great significance in treating diseases of the internal organs. Yuan source points are the sites where the Yuan primary chi of the Zhangfu organs passes and stays. Puncturing the Yuan source point stimulates the vital energy of the regular meridians, regulates the functional activities of the internal organs, reinforces antipathogenic factors, and eliminates pathogenic factors. This method of treating diseases deals principally 
with the root causes. The Yuan source point from the affected meridian is often combined with the Lu connecting point of the internally externally related meridians in use. Shu stream points are where the Qi starts to pour down the meridian. They are known to alleviate heaviness and pain in the joints. On yin meridians, Shu stream points are identical to the actions of Yuan source points. Needling perpendicular insertion 0.5 to 0.8 soon. Liver 3 relaxes muscles and sinews. Location on the dorsum of the foot in the depression proximal to the first metatarsal space. Liver 3 is Yuan source point of the liver meridian and shoestring point of the liver meridian. Regulates liver chi, subdues liver yang, regulates menstruation, calms the shen, nourishes liver yin. Liver 3 is a very important and commonly used point. It is often coupled with Li4, known as the four gates, to effectively move the chi and blood throughout the body. Needling perpendicular insertion 0.5 to 0.8 soon. Case history. A 45-year-old man complained of acute sprain of the lower back. This was not the first time as he had had several attacks in the previous 10 years. The first attack occurred after lifting a heavy weight. At this time, he could not move at all for a week. The present attack had also been elicited by lifting, and he experienced a severe pain on the right side around the right sacroiliac area. The pain radiated down to the buttock and back of the leg. The straight leg raising test proved positive, that is, raising his right leg with the knee straight provoked intense pain in the back. This indicates lumbosacral nerve root compression from a prolapse disc at the level of L4, L5. Diagnosis. This is obvious from the symptoms. From the Chinese viewpoint, it is an acute sprain of the lower back. And from the Western perspective, it is a herniation of the L4, L5 disc. As he had had repeated attacks over 10 years, this showed that there must also be an underlying deficiency of the kidneys. His pulse, weak on both rear positions, and some of his symptoms such as backache after sex confirmed this. Only acupuncture was administered at his home as he could not move from bed. The distal points used were bladder 62 on the right, heart 7 on the left, kidney 4 on on the left and liver 3 on the right. Bladder 62 was used to remove obstructions from the bladder channel on the right side. Heart 7 was selected to calm the mind and relax the nerves. Kidney 4 connecting point was used to simultaneously tonify the kidneys and invigorate its connecting channel and therefore the bladder channel. Liver 3 was chosen to relax the muscles and sinews. The placing of needles unilaterally in this pattern is a very effective and dynamic way of combining points. Bladder 40 on the right was also used as a distal point once he turned over to remove obstructions from the bladder channel. All the distal points were needled with reducing method except for kidney 4 and the needles left in place for 45 minutes. The local points were selected according to tenderness. Bladder 26 on the right side reduced vigorously and then cupped. Bladder 23 was needled because the attacks recurred repeatedly over 10 years, indicating a kidney deficiency. Tun Chung was needled with reducing method at a depth of 2.5 inches. Heart 7 calms the mind and relaxes the nerves. Location on the wrist at the ulnar end of the transverse crease of the wrist in the depression on the radial side of the tendon of flexor carpi ulnaris. Heart 7 is Yuan source point of the heart meridian and shoestream point of the heart meridian. Calms the shen, tonifies and regulates the heart blood and qi. 
Heart 7 is the point for emotional issues, especially excessive anxiety and worry. Needling, perpendicular insertion, 0.3 to 0.5 soon. Kidney 4, connecting point, simultaneously tonifies the kidneys and invigorates its connecting channel and therefore the bladder channel. Location on the medial aspect of the foot, posterior and inferior to the medial malleolus in the depression anterior to the medial side of the attachment of tendocalcaneus. Kidney 4 is slew connecting point of the kidney meridian. Benefits the kidneys, local point for heel, ankle pain, strengthens the will. Loop connecting points of one meridian can communicate with two meridians. They treat diseases of the collaterals and can be used to treat chronic diseases, especially chronic diseases of the Zanfu organs. Clinically, loop connecting points are often combined with Yuan source points in the treatment of diseases. Needling perpendicular insertion 0.3 to 0.5 soon. 10 daily sessions produced complete remission. The patient was advised to take more exercise, do stretching exercises for his back, reduce sexual activity, avoid lifting weights. After this attack, he had other less severe attacks, which acupuncture cleared up very quickly in one or two sessions. Now let's go to chronic conditions. Chronic conditions are always due to a kidney deficiency that can be combined with retention of cold dampness or stagnation of chi and blood, or even both these conditions. In chronic conditions, local points are primary in relation to distal ones. The distal points to use are the same as for acute cases with some additional ones. Distal points, SI3 and bladder 62. In combination, open the governing vessel, Strengthen the spine and tonify kidneys. Excellent treatment for chronic backache from kidney deficiency. In a man, needle SI3 on the left and bladder 62 on the right. In women, governing vessel is best combined with directing vessel. In a woman, needle SI3 on the right, bladder 62 on the left, lung 7 on the left and kidney 6 on the right in this order. Remove the needles in reverse order. These two treatments are only effective if backache stems from the midline over the spine. If the ache starts on one side only, then different points should be used. So the figure here shows the use of governing vessel in men and women. Bladder 62 and small intestine 3. In this order, open the yang stepping vessel and may be used if the back ache radiates outwards towards the hip. In a man, use bladder 62 on the left and SI3 on the right and the opposite in a woman. The figure shows the use of yang stepping vessel in men and women. Bladder 60, a very important distal point for chronic backache in chronic cases. It is the point of choice to replace bladder 40, which may sometimes aggravate the backache if used in chronic cases. Bladder 60 also affects the upper part of the back and the neck. Kidney 4 is good if there is an underlying kidney deficiency, as it will simultaneously tonify the kidneys and affect the bladder channel by virtue of its being the connecting point. Spleen 3 influences the spine and is good to select in chronic backache with obvious scoliosis of the spine. We use this point quite frequently in these cases with good results. Chapter 4 of the simple question says, Diseases of the spleen affect the spine. Do 20 can be used as a distal point to affect the governing vessel when the pain is on the lower part of the lumbar spine. Heart 7 affects the back indirectly because of its relation with the kidney channel within the lesser yin. It also relieves back ache by calming the mind and relieving spasm. 
Strange as it may seem, we use this point very frequently in chronic backache, suitably combined with others, with excellent results. It is especially indicated in tense men with a wiry and fine pulse. An example of combination of distal points for chronic backache stemming from the midline in a man might be SI3 on the left and bladder 62 on the right, the governing vessel points, heart 7 on the right and spleen 3 on the left. This combination opens the governing vessel and removes obstructions from it, strengthens the kidneys and the spine, expels wind, calms the mind, relieves possum, and straightens the spine. After withdrawal of these points, local points could be used. Example of distal points combination in chronic back ache. In a woman, the combination would be SI3 on the right and bladder 62 on the left, the governing vessel points, lung 7 on the left and kidney 6 on the right the directing vessel points, heart 7 on the right and spleen 3 on the left. In chronic cases, it is important to select other points to treat the general condition underlying the back problem. In particular, one must treat the spleen to affect the back muscles, the liver to affect the vertebral ligaments and cartilage, and the kidneys to affect the bones. The combination of source points with back transporting points would be particularly effective. Spleen 3 and bladder 20 for the spleen, kidney 3 and bladder 23 for the kidneys, bladder 11 and GB39 for the bones. The local points in chronic back ache are also selected according to tenderness on pressure, but bladder 23 should be used in every case. Other very important local points are as follows. Bladder 26, Shiha Shisha, Bladder 54. If the pain radiates to the buttocks, Tunjung, an extra point lateral to Bladder 54, halfway between the midline and the edge of the buttock. It is an extremely effective point for pain in the buttocks, also when it radiates to the leg. It is more often tender on pressure than bladder 54. If the pain radiates down to the leg, a good needling sensation should be obtained, preferably running down the leg. Yao Yan, an extra point in the depression, lateral to the interspace between the spinous processes of L4 and L5. It is a good local point for chronic backache, especially in the lower part. It is often tender on pressure. If there is kidney yang deficiency or if there is cold dampness in the back, the moxa box placed on the lower back over bladder 26 and chiha shisha is extremely effective. Case history. A 54-year-old man had been suffering from backache for over 20 years. The ache was across the lower back stemming from the midline and was aggravated by work and improved by rest. Other symptoms and signs included night sweating, depression, a dry mouth at night, insomnia, waking up frequently during the night, and a red tongue, generally without coating except for a sticky yellow coating on the root. This is a very clear case of backache from deficiency of kidney yin, as all the other manifestations show. There was also some damp heat in the lower burner, as evidenced by the sticky yellow coating on the root of the tongue. This would play a part in the pathogenesis of his backache. The principle was to nourish kidney yin and strengthen the back. The main points used were kidney 3, kidney 6, and REN4 to nourish kidney yin, bladder 23 to strengthen the back, bladder 26, and shiha shisha as local points according to tenderness, SI3 and bladder 62 to open the governing vessel, tonify the kidneys, strengthen the back, boost the willpower, and lift depression. Do 20 in combination with the op opening points of the governing vessel to boost the willpower and lift depression. It also acts as a distal point for lower back ache when the ache starts from the midline. Another case history. 
A 63-year-old woman had been suffering from lower back ache for most of her life. This had started after she had contracted polio at the age of 13. Her left leg became paralyzed and the resulting limp caused the back ache. Her knees also ached and her urination was very frequent, also at night and pale. She also felt very tired and experienced dizziness and tinnitus. She felt easily cold. Her tongue was pale and swollen and her pulse was deep, slow, 60 beats per minute, and weak, especially on both rear positions. This backache was originally due to the paralysis and shortening of one leg from polio. Subsequently, kidney yang deficiency contributed to its development. The principle adopted was to tonify and warm the kidneys and strengthen the back. The main points used were bladder 23 and do 4 to tonify and warm kidney yang. The points were needled and warmed with a moxa stick. Bladder 25, do 3, and shi ha chi sha as local points to strengthen the lower back. Do 3 was selected because it affects both the lower back and the legs and it would therefore help her knee ache. Bladder 60 was used as a distal point to strengthen the bladder channel. This was alternated with bladder 57, stomach 36, spleen 6, and kidney 7 with warming needle to tonify and warm spleen and kidney yang. Treatment of sciatica. If the pain radiates down to the leg from the back, it indicates a more full condition, usually due to cold dampness in the leg channels. Occasionally, it may also be due to damp heat. The pain may also only occur in the leg without affecting the back. Distal points. To select the distal points, one must accurately identify the channel involved. The main distal points for sciatica are as follows. Bladder 40 if the pain is on the bladder channel. This point is better for acute than chronic cases. It should also be kept in mind that this point tends to have a reducing and cooling effect. It is therefore not suitable if there is a deficiency of kidney yang. Bladder 60 if the pain is on the bladder channel and is chronic. Bladder 57 may be selected as a distal point instead of bladder 40 when there is an underlying kidney yang deficiency. Bladder 58 if the pain is in between the bladder and gallbladder channel. Bladder 62 if the pain starts from around the hip area, radiates to the lateral side of the thigh and then to the back of the lower leg along the bladder channel. Gallbladder 41 or gallbladder 40 if the pain occurs along the gallbladder channel. Kidney 4, connecting point of the kidney channel, when there is an underlying kidney deficiency. It simultaneously tonifies the kidneys and invigorates its connecting channel and therefore the bladder channel. Obviously, any of the distal points may be used as a local point when the pain extends to the lower leg. Tunjong if the leg pain starts from the bottom, this point should be inserted at least 2 inches deep and a good needling sensation obtained, preferably radiating down to the leg. Bladder 36 is often a tender point and if so, should be selected. Again, the needling sensation should radiate down the leg. And bladder 37, same as the previous. Gallbladder 30, an extremely important point if the leg pain occurs along the gallbladder channel. This point should be needled at least 2.5 inches deep with the patient lying on the opposite side. The needling sensation should preferably radiate all the way down to the ankle. If it does, one does not need to use any other local point. If the needling sensation radiates only as far as the knee, then one can use GB34 to extend the sensation further to the foot. Moxa on the needle on GB30 is very beneficial. GB31, an important local point for sciatica along the gallbladder channel, Moxa on the needle is very effective. GB34, selected if the pain occurs in the lower leg. Apart from its function as a local point, it benefits the sinews and would therefore help to relax the tendons. Gallbladder 30, 
location on the lateral side of the buttocks when the patient is in the lateral recumbent position and the thigh is flexed. This point is at the junction of the lateral third and medial third of the line connecting the greater trochanter and the hiatus of the sacrum. GB30 is the crossing point of the gallbladder and urinary bladder meridians, activates the meridian and removes obstructions, benefits the hips and legs, resolves wind damp, relieves pain. GB30 is a common and important point in the treatment of sciatica. Needling perpendicular insertion 2 to 3 tune. GB31, location on the midline of the lateral aspect of the thigh, 7 tune above the transverse popliteal crease. When the patient is standing erect with the hands hanging down close to the sides, the point is where the tip of the middle finger touches. Dispels wind, activates the meridian, relieves itching, relieves pain. GB31 is an empirical point to treat itching. Needling perpendicular insertion, 1 to 2 tsun. GB34, on the lateral aspect of the lower leg, in the depression anterior and inferior to the head of the fibula. Classification, hesive point of the gallbladder meridian, converging point of the sinews. Benefits the sinews and joints, activates the meridian, moves the liver chi, harmonizes the Shao Yang, relieves pain. GB34 is a very good point to move the liver chi and to treat anything related to the sinews. Needling perpendicular insertion 1 to 1.5 soon. Unless there is damp heat in the bladder or gallbladder channel, moxa is extremely beneficial in sciatica. This is best done with a moxa stick gently heating the area around each needle and especially Tunjung, bladder 36, and bladder 37. A good method is also to gently heat the bladder channel all the way from bladder 36 to bladder 40 until a red line appears. Prognosis and Prevention Acupuncture can be extremely effective in the treatment of both acute and chronic back pain, more so than herbal medicine. It sometimes produces extraordinary results in the face of all odds when there are severe structural imbalances in the spine. The duration of the complaint seems to be less relevant in backache than in other diseases. Many cases of very chronic backache of, say, over 20 years duration are sometimes cleared in a few sessions. Acute attacks from sprain or invasion of cold dampness can be cleared in a few treatments, sometimes even only one. If, however, the acute attack is a recurrence of a chronic problem, the treatment will take much longer, usually about 10 to 15 sessions. When the backache is accompanied by sciatica, it will usually take longer to treat. If the patient's tongue is red and without coating, and the pulse is rapid, slippery, and wiry, the prognosis is poor, and the treatment will either be unsuccessful or will take a long time. Further indications on prognosis must consider the Western diagnosis, distinguishing the four conditions of chronic lumbar ligamentous strain, spondylosis, osteoarthritis, and disc herniation. Chronic Lower lumbar ligamentous strain and spondylosis respond extremely well to treatment in the way indicated above. Severe spinal osteoarthritis obviously reduces the effectiveness of acupuncture, which, although it will produce an improvement, may never completely cure it. However, it is important not to attribute excessive importance to a diagnosis of spinal osteoarthritis as this often has no correlation with clinical symptoms. For example, many patients show severe osteoarthritic changes in the spine without suffering any backache. Conversely, sometimes very slight degenerative changes in the vertebrae may produce severe pain. This apparent paradox can be explained in the light of the Chinese pathology of backache. There are other factors at play besides spinal osteoarthritis producing backache, such as sprain, cold dampness, chi and blood stagnation, and a kidney deficiency. Thus, if a patient suffering from chronic backache presents with x-rays 
pronouncing spinal osteoarthritis, it is important always to keep in mind the possibility that such degenerative changes are not related to the pain experienced by the patient. This explains how many patients with supposedly fairly severe osteoarthritis of the spine do respond to acupuncture extremely well. Of course, if severe spinal osteoarthritis is the cause of the pain in old people, then acupuncture will be less effective. As for prolapse disc, acupuncture can be very effective to treat both acute and chronic cases of disc herniation, as the nucleus pulposus can be reabsorbed in the, the annulus fibrosus. The treatment principle and selection of points do not differ from those indicated above for acute and chronic backache. Obviously, in acute cases of disc herniation, treatment should be given every day for at least one week. After that, it can be spaced out to every two to three days. In that time, the patient should have complete bed rest. As for prevention, as indicated above, probably the main underlying cause of chronic backache in Western industrialized countries is the lack of exercise. Many people lead a very sedentary life and have almost no exercise. In order to prevent backache, such people should be encouraged to take regular exercise, even if it is only brisk walking. Tai Chi Chuan is an excellent form of exercise that gently strengthens the back and keeps all sinews and ligaments supple. Gentle back stretching and twisting exercises are also important. Those who have a propensity to back sprain should never lift heavy weights as this not only can cause an acute sprain but also weakens kidney chi. Those who have a propensity to back problems and a kidney deficiency should also reduce their sexual activity. This applies to men more than women. It should also be said with regard to prevention that excessive exercise is also a frequent cause of back problems. In particular, excessive jogging or aerobic exercises can cause back sprain. This is more likely to occur to those who start engaging in such activities fairly abruptly in their late 30s or early 40s after a completely sedentary life. Lower back A can be treated perfectly adequately and successfully according to the Chinese diagnosis and treatment outlined earlier without any reference to Western medicine. However, it is important for acupuncture practitioners to understand at least the basics of the Western pathology of back pain, if only to be able to communicate with patients and their doctors. Western medical doctors are increasingly referring patients to us. Back pain may be caused by very many conditions, the most common of which are chronic lower lumbar ligamentous strain, the ligaments, spondylosis, synovial joints of vertebrae, spinal osteoarthritis, the vertebrae, herniated lumbar disc, the disc. These four conditions affect each of the main structures of the lumbar spine as indicated above in parentheses, that is, the ligaments, the zygoapophysial joints, or the synovial joints, between vertebrae, the vertebrae themselves, and the discs in between the vertebrae. This figure shows the anatomy of two lumbar vertebrae, while this figure shows the zygoapophysial joints between two lumbar vertebrae. Chronic lower lumbar ligamentous strain. This is a very general term that applies to an ill-defined group of conditions characterized by persistent and recurrent back pain without a recognizable pathology. It is due to the back muscles failing to protect the ligaments in maintaining posture. The pain is usually better with rest and worse on exercise. From a Chinese medical perspective, as the problem lies within the muscles and ligaments, it is necessary to treat the spleen and liver with points such as spleen 3 and GB34. It is interesting to note that the Simple Questions book says that spleen disease influences the spine. 
This is obviously in the sense that it influences the muscles alongside the spine. Spondylosis. This term describes slowly progressive anatomical changes to the vertebral bodies and intervertebral discs that may be associated with critical pain syndromes. The symptoms consist of back pain that is worse for movement, especially extension and tenderness over the affected joint. The movement of the joints is restricted and the muscles alongside the spine are stiff and under spasm. As this is a condition affecting the synovial joints with their cartilage and ligaments, one would treat the liver with points such as GB34, liver 8, and bladder 18. Spinal osteoarthritis consists of degenerative changes of the vertebral bodies themselves. These changes cause a narrowing of the discs and hypertrophy of bone at the joint margins that lead to the formation of osteophytes. Osteoarthritis of the spine can be very severe without causing any symptoms. In most cases, it causes an ache that is worse on exertion and in the morning. There may be a feeling of stiffness when going up from a sitting position. As this condition consists of the generation of the vertebral bodies themselves, one would treat the kidneys and the bones with kidney 3, bladder 23, and bladder 11. Herniated lumbar disc is the most common cause of nerve root compression. It is caused by the nucleus pulposus, the ball of collagenous material inside the disc, bursting through the annulus fibrosus. The tough and yet elastic fibrocartilaginous ring constituting the outside of the disc. This condition is commonly referred to as slip disc. This is of course a misleading term as the disc itself does not move. It is only the central nucleus that bursts through the outer ring. The most common discs to herniate are those at L4, L5, and L5S1. The thinnest part of the annulus fibrosus is in the posterolateral region of the disc. Thus, most hernias occur in this region where interference with nerve roots is most likely. The nucleus pulposus may also herniate only partially. This gives rise to pain without nerve root irritation. Herniation of the nucleus pulposus is more frequent in people in their 30s or early 40s. When degeneration of the annulus fibrosus occurs, it is rare later on in life as the nucleus pulposus becomes fibrous and cannot herniate. The main clinical manifestations of a herniated nucleus pulposus are a sudden and severe shooting pain in the back radiating down to either leg, sciatica. The radiation of the pain follows the dermatome distribution. It is interesting to note that the location of pain in sciatica follows the distribution of the acupuncture channels and not necessarily the dermatomes. We must therefore always base our selection of points on the channel distribution and not the dermatomes. However, in the case of disc herniation, it is also useful to take the dermatome distribution into account and use points on the governing vessel, the dumai, and their corresponding Watochiaji points at the level of the disc lesion and one space below this level. This is because the symptoms and signs arise from the compression of the nerve root of the spinal nerve below the disc. For example, herniation of the disc between L5 and S1 causes symptoms of nerve root irritation of the S1 spinal nerve. In acute cases, the back pain is severe and no position is comfortable. The patient instinctively adopts a posture of scoliosis, curving towards the side of the hernia and movements of the spine are extremely restricted. Straight leg raising is limited on the side of the root irritation and produces intense pain. This test is carried out with the patient's supine face up Holding the knee straight, lift each leg in turn, flexing at the hip. Marked impairment of the leg movement and pain when lifted over 30 degrees 
indicates lumbosacral nerve root compression. This is further confirmed if more pain is elicited by dorsiflexion of the foot. Numbness of the leg will appear in a dermatome distribution. In some cases, paralysis of the extensor hallucis longus muscle or toe extensor muscles is observed. The pain deriving from a herniated disc is not due to the disc itself, but to compression of the nerve root and dura mater. The torn annulus fibrosus can heal and the herniated nucleus pulposus can be reabsorbed. Disc herniation may persist for months or even years, becoming chronic. Acute back pain develops suddenly, often as a consequence of an identifiable injury. It can resolve within a matter of days, but may last up to six weeks. Chronic pain tends to develop more gradually over time, and it may become progressively worse. Disc herniation is most often the result of a gradual aging-related wear and tear called disc degeneration. As people age, the discs become less flexible and more prone to tearing or rupturing with even a minor strain or twist. Most people can't pinpoint the cause of their herniated disc. Herniated discs get better on their own over time or with non-surgical treatment for 9 out of 10 people. If other treatments don't relieve your symptoms, your healthcare provider may recommend surgery. An untreated herniated disc can get worse. That's especially true if you continue the activities that caused it. For instance, if it developed because of your work. A worsening ruptured disc may cause chronic ongoing pain and loss of control or sensation in the affected area. If you leave a herniated disc untreated, you may experience intense sharp pains, partial paralysis, or the inability to control bowel movements in relatively dire situations. The most common diagnostic tests include x-rays, MRI or CT scans, blood tests, bone scan, and nerve studies. Depending on the type of back pain experienced by the patient, the following medications may be recommended over-the-counter pain relievers such as NSAIDs, muscle relaxants, narcotics, antidepressants, and steroids. Nowadays, a city-guided spinal injection is the most widely used technique for a minimally invasive treatment of lumbar disc herniation. Physical therapy and exercise may be recommended, whereas few people need surgery for low back pain and sciatica. Red flag in Western medicine. Lower back ache and sciatica of recent onset with paralysis of the extensor hallucis longus muscle or toe extensor muscles require urgent neurosurgical assessment. Thank you very much for your attention.